Welcome back everybody to another new video. So today I wanted to cover something that I was kind of testing out one day and realized it's actually pretty good. And that's Krieg's synergies with pearlescent items, more specifically the underrated pearlescent items. Obviously Krieg can be good with the good pearls and everyone knows that, but I feel like he has some hidden aspects to him that really take these to the next level. One of the biggest issue with most pearlescents is the damage output. We can abuse that by using a little skill called Bloodbath, which for anyone that doesn't know somehow, uh, essentially you get stacks of Bloodlust as you damage enemies. Once you're at 100 stacks, this skill will make it so upon killing an enemy with a grenade, quote unquote, uh, grenade or explosion, when you kill an enemy with it, you'll go up to 250% bonus weapon damage. If you're using a Reaper Calm, it goes up to 500%. And the Reaper Calm also will double your kill skill duration to 14 seconds. So that's great and all, but how does that really synergize well with his build? For one, it just increases the damage. Like for instance, on the Butcher, the Butcher has no way to proc Bloodbath. It really doesn't do anything like that. But with the Butcher, it does high DPS, but low damage per shot. If you've ever used the Butcher, you know that each shot itself doesn't really do much, honestly. But the pure DPS from the fire rate and the damage combined makes it shred through enemies so imagine that but with 500 percent bonus damage for 14 seconds while you're using it which means that you're able to spend essentially 13 seconds using whatever you want and then what the last second at the end to restack bloodbath with a grenade or the other part of bloodbath being splash damage so i think most people know that you can proc bloodbath with grenade based damage like if you use an unkept herald there's a chance that you'll end up procking that uh, based off if the splash of the unkept herald does it and also if you were to shoot the floor with an unkept herald that will make it so it will always proc bloodbath because it does entirely splash damage at that point but what bloodbath doesn't tell you is that anything classified as launcher splash which is essentially pure splash damage that doesn't get buffed by anything else in the game to my knowledge uh if something has that it can also proc bloodbath and guess what two weapons well three weapons guess what three weapons happen to have 100% pure splash. The Carnage is one of them, which I think everyone knows the Carnage is a good shotgun. And Krieg actually does better with the Carnage, I would say, than even Axton, because Axton has no way to actually buff the damage of it directly, like through uh, any sort of grenade bonuses or anything, because it doesn't do grenade damage. He can buff it through his just damage skills, Metal Storm, Onslaught, Impact, all of that will obviously buff it. But he can't buff it with anything aside from ex an explosive relic, as we're Krieg can use an explosive relic, and Strip the Flesh actually gives a bonus to explosive damage, not grenade damage, meaning he can directly affect it. And since the Carnage does 100% pure splash, it will always proc Bloodbath every single time you kill an enemy with it. And there are two other weapons that surprise me to learn are the exact same way, and that is both the Bearcat and the Wanderlust. If you get a kill with either of these, it will always proc Bloodbath 100% of the time. Now, I will be honest, the Bearcat is still ammo inefficient, but you will be surprised how well it actually kills the enemies. But of course it's ammo inefficient, it's the Bearcat, okay? There's nothing to save that, but this will show that it is extremely usable. It's a very usable weapon once you get your kill skills going. Before anyone complains about it in the comments and goes, oh, well, your build's only working because Bloodbath, okay? I could say the same thing about Gage. I could say the only reason she can use the Wanderlust so well, or the Hive so well, is because of anarchy. That's the whole point of this video. So I could understand someone making that point, but that's the whole point. Krieg is able to make it work because of this one skill. But there are synergies beyond that as well. For instance, with the Butcher, Krieg is able to take the magazine size to ridiculous amounts. He can take the fire rate to ridiculous amounts. He's able to buff the element on it and he's able to heal from the damage he's doing with it. And that's another big thing of the Wonderlust because the dot, the DOT of the Wonderlust is actually so high that Elemental Empathy will genuinely be healing you like crazy while you're using the Wonderlust. These are the main four weapons that I'm really gonna be trying to show off today because they're the ones that have the best synergy. But that's not to say that Krieg doesn't have great synergy with the other ones as well. The Unforgiven, it's still the Unforgiven, but genuinely, if you get Bloodbath, you can one-shot enemies with it pretty easily. Other than that, he doesn't really have much. I mean, he gives it bonus fire rate, but that's about it. The Tunguska is 
still the Tunguska. Honestly, its damage just isn't worth the risk of using it. It's not a bad rocket launcher and it will be proccing Bloodbath, but I would take most other launchers over it. He can use the Avenger well if you're good with the Avenger, but honestly he goes through much, so much ammo with it when he reloads that it's not really worth it and you have to set it up really well, but he can use it just fine. Uh, Godfinger is pretty much the same thing as the Unforgiven. He can make it do high damage with Bloodbath, but he doesn't really have any other synergies beyond that. The Stalker, on the other hand, he's able to turn that into just an absolute Gatling gun of damage. Because you've got bonus 500% damage, you've got bonus fire rate from Embrace the Pain and from uh, Elemental Empathy, or I apologize, Elemental Elation, I mean. Uh, you're able to buff the damage over time on it, and you're all around just able to make it do insane damage. Also, something I forgot to mention on both the Carnage and the Butcher is that Krieg also has Salt the Wound, which can make shotguns do 100% bonus damage at max stacks, so you can literally do double damage with both of those. I don't know why I forgot to mention that. That's like a very important aspect of that. But yeah, so he can turn the Stalker into a Shredding Machine. The Sawbar has a bit more synergy than others. Again, the 500% bonus to the damage is really, really, really insane, especially once you get it at the perfect distance. If you're able to get the distance right, it just makes it in insane DPS. But beyond that, it's like, it's just that and it being fire. Now, the Becca isn't a weapon you'd really ever think to use on Krieg. I feel like nobody in their right mind has ever said, oh, the Becca, let me put this on my Krieg. But again, I'll show you, he, he doesn't have many direct synergies with the Becca beyond just Bloodbath. But with Bloodbath, you can literally one-shot enemies in OP-10 with this. So he still has some synergies, but nothing like super cool or direct. Technically, he should have synergy with the Storm. This is the only Pearl that I have made just genuinely not work on Krieg because it is so bad for so many reasons. However, there is the bonus grenade damage on the Tesla orbs of this. I want I want to say that if you were able to proc fuel the blood, it could do damage. I don't know that for a fact. I have not tested that, but I want to say that. And yeah, that pretty much covers all of the pearlescents. So let's go ahead and run through South Plus Demon Power. I'm going to use the Carnage. This will be like to really start off the chains of damage and stuff. Uh, you know what? We'll keep on the Butcher to start. We might end up doing two runs through here. I'm not sure. And then I just got a Rough Rider, a Reaper Calm, which this is very integral to this whole build. Also, uh, a lot of these weapons don't necessarily do enough to make Thrill of the Kill full heal you. But by using the Reaper, it will because it's buffing Thrill of the Kill up to plus six. And then we've got a Betty for slagging and then just a Fire Relic. So we're using the Winters over versus using a Bone of the Ancients because the cooldown literally doesn't matter. And let's go ahead and get right into this. But before we go fight the enemies, if you're enjoying this video, and if you end up enjoying this video, please leave a like and please consider subscribing. Your support is so greatly appreciated. Let's go ahead and go right into this. The way that I like to play with all pearls is I start off. Oh, the slug is not a pearl. I start off using the carnage to because it does the most base damage. I can use that to proc my bloodbath and then I'm able to kill with everything else. But I want to get a few stacks before I get bloodlust. So I'll throw probably two Bettys. That'll put me up at probably 30 stacks by the time I get a kill. Yeah, I'm playing this really bad. Sorry. I'm just missing all my shots. Okay, here we go. So we've got stacks up, and let's go ahead and use the Wonderlust at only 50 stacks of Bloodlust. And pretty much no problem. It, it just ripped through that guy's shield. And as we get more stacks of everything, the momentum will go greater, and the damage will go much, much higher. So we're now at 100 stacks, and we're getting Elemental Elation stacks. That guy almost just got one shot, and then we'll pull out the Butcher for this guy, because we've got Bloodbath proc. And holy schmoly. Absolutely shredding. It does not matter. Oh, I lost Bloodbath right here. So I'm going to go ahead and swap to the Carnage for an easier kill. And I actually got my kill stolen by a dot. Okay, got Bloodbath up again. Start shooting at the enemies. And literally, I can just sit here shooting into the air, and the Wonderlust will eventually kill them all. You can also watch my health whenever I start to get low, as the damage over time on this is just going to pretty much shred through the enemies. Or shred the enemies enough to heal me enough, I should say, through Elemental Elation. 
The biggest issue with the Wanderlust is sometimes you just have to wait for it to reach the enemy. There's the Carnage one-shotting, by the way. And I want to mention, too, the Carnage is already able of one-shotting. Hey, we got the skin. Carnage is already able of one-shotting. And this is without using Explosive Relic, so I could buff the damage by another 42%, which would take it to a whole different level. Also, you can't see it at the bottom of my screen, but I do have Bloodbath up. There's a glitch where if you get down while Bloodbath is proc, it takes it off visually, but it's still active the whole time. So again, I get a kill with a Carnage to get my Bloodbath, and then everything dies very quickly. And I think here we'll go ahead and swap to the Bearcat, which is probably the weapon that surprised me the most, because the Bearcat is known to be a pretty horrible weapon. But let's see what kind of damage it does. The genuinely the biggest issue I have with the Bearcat on Krieg is that you end up doing so much damage that you kill yourself a lot with the grenades. But you're able to kill most things in just a few shots. This lunatic kind of sucks, so we'll just carnage him out of the way. Get the Wanderlust going again. You can even just hide around a corner if you want. Go AFK, essentially. And every single one of these kills chains Bloodbath for another 14 seconds. Which means as long as you are holding down the trigger, you will keep Bloodbath up the whole time. Okay, and this guy's closing in on me, so I might end up killing myself. But Bearcat has no problem shredding through him. I've got Bloodbath up again. One burst. That guy's dead. Now, I'm in no way trying to say in this video that these are the best weapons to use on Krieg or anything. But I am showing that they are extremely usable, like beyond usable on Krieg. Thanks to Krieg being the GOAT. Again, I like to start with the Carnage. And now I can just start Wonderlusting him. That guy wasn't even slagged, and he just died in a few shots. The healing's really kicking in. I, I didn't get any sort of thrill, thrill of the kill there, and yet I was shooting up above health gate. Use the Bearcat a little bit more. It should be pretty much two-shotting every enemy you see. Or all the all the weaker enemies. Nomads might take, you know, four shots or something. It'll also depend a little bit on your aim and how many of the shots you hit. Or how big the target is. Oh, there I actually killed myself with it because it does so much damage. And of course we can use the Carnage if we want, but the Carnage is like so good that I don't necessarily feel like I need to show it off. But you can see it's good. I mean, it is what it is. Let's go ahead and throw on the saw bar here because I think this is actually a pretty good spot to use it. My Bloodbath might end up running out though before I'm able to use it. We'll see. My Bloodbath is low, so I'm going to Swap to Carnage. Uh, I down myself there. No problem. Wow, that was an extremely quick run through uh, Steam and Power. I genuinely did not expect it to be that quick, so let's go ahead and show off some synergies with some other weapons now. Show off a few of the others. So we'll keep on the Sawbar and goodbye, Wonderlust. I love you. We'll go ahead and put on the Stalker and show just how much damage that can do. Again, I like to keep on the Carnage because it is a very consistent way to proc Bloodbath. Because it does decent base damage to start with. 
All right, let's see what the stalker can do. Oh, actually, the saw bar, because I misclicked and opened it. No problem at all. Alright, I'd really like to kill this guy with Stalker. Yeah, no problem. If I could aim, this guy would be dead. There we go. No problem at all. We want to get Bloodbath back up. And Shred once again. And we can also go ahead... I should have bought ammo before this. We can also go ahead and check out the synergy with the Becca. And again, the Becca doesn't have necessarily any direct synergies beyond just doing more damage. But you'll see that doing more damage is not a bad thing. Also, I actually put this on. You'll see that just doing more damage is not a bad thing in any way. Oh, everything's dying to Bloodbath. So let's see Assassin 1Y, because he's pretty much the tankiest guy. That was one magazine. Less than one magazine. I re reloaded prematurely. Um, excuse me, sir. Alright, here we go, on to some more enemies. Give me my bloodbath, and then the room kind of just got blood exploded there. But you can see, he pretty much died in one shot. As soon as I hit the crit, he died. The Becca doesn't really suit Krieg's playstyle very well, but he makes it very good. So if you want to have more of a, a playstyle that'll fit a Jacobs, then feel free to use the Becca. And then Blood Explosion just clears the rest of that up for me. My bad. So you can see the Becca is like, it has zero problem shredding enemies. I'm gonna go ahead and put the Butcher back on just because it's fun to use. And I'll try to show off that the Unforgiven is usable. Again, not necessarily good, but it is usable. If I can actually hit them. My weapon sway is so bad right now. If you land a crit, like... It should insta-kill most of the time with Bloodbath. As soon as you lose Bloodbath, though, you can see that's the damage it's doing. The Unforgiven is not a good weapon. Like, I feel like an argument can actually be made for something like the Wanderlust, because on Krieg and Gage, it's actually genuinely usable. However, the Unforgiven... I don't think there's an argument for that. But again, I mean, it's usable, and usable is better than nothing. That's a one-shot. That's almost a one-shot. And the fire rate actually gets somewhat decent, better than normal. This is without Bloodbath even being active. And then once you get Bloodbath active, it's just no contest for the enemies. Alright, hopefully we can use the last of this Bloodbath to get... Few more kills with the butcher. 
we're able to get one. Now if we can get Bloodbath Rock again. And Roof dies in just a few seconds. So that was... I don't even know how long that was. Was that like five minutes to go through all of this? Let's go ahead and take this, though, through a robot-based area. Because robots are a lot tankier. I am using this build right now against pretty weak enemies. But we'll go ahead and go through probably the Washburn Refinery and see how it does there. I feel like the Washburn Refinery is not very good for Krieg because it's hard to keep your chain, your kill skills chained the whole time. Because there are a lot of gaps with no enemies in them. But I still don't feel like we'll have too much of a problem. So we're going to put on my... Probably my favorite setup here of having a Carnage, a Butcher, and a Wanderlust. Bearcat also does actually pretty well against the robots because all the shots will always hit. Also, no, I'm not playing with any sort of game-altering mod. I've got some, like, quality of life mods on, but nothing that would actually alter the gameplay. No community patch or anything, so all of this is totally vanilla. I'd actually like to get some stacks, so I'm going to get them a bit lower with the Butcher. I'm up at 50 stacks with Bloodlust now. And Bloodbath is up. Flag everything. Oh, and let me change my Bone of the Ancients. That makes sense. And the enemies take more shots, but they'll die pretty quick. They uh, die in... They should, for the most part, be dying in less than one mag of the supposed... Worst weapon in the game. And then obviously if I want, I can swap to something like the Butcher, which will have literally zero problems shredding through them. And even without Bloodbath, the Butcher is able to do enough damage to these guys. I feel like the Butcher kind of excels against robots almost. I'd really like it if these shots can... Okay, that got me Bloodbath, so I can actually use it on this guy here. Absolutely demolished. Even though the Wonderlust is really just hold left click and you eventually get kills, I for some reason actually find it really fun on Krieg. I don't know what it is. My bloodbath is down. Go ahead and try to reproc that. Got myself one shot. There we go. Honestly, the ammo consumption on the Wanderlust isn't even bad. You would think that it would be, but it's really not bad. Certainly not any worse than the Bearcat which we can go ahead and swap back to as well. Yeah, like I said earlier, the Bearcat really is going to have no problem against the loaders at all. And should probably one burst most of them, so long as you're actually hitting your shots. Just one more shot. And then we do have Bloodbath up still, even though it doesn't show it. So this whole thing has kind of got me thinking on what really is the worst gun in the whole game, because... The longest time it was always like, oh, well, probably the Wanderlust. Everyone knows the Wanderlust sucks, but it's like, no, honestly, on Gage and Krieg, thing is, it's actually usable, you know? 
Um, and more than just usable. And you can see even the Bearcat is more than usable. The ammo consumption is very bad. But it has no problem shredding the enemies. This essentially feels like what a depot feels like early game, where the ammo consumption is a little too big for the damage you put out, but the damage is so insane that it's kind of worth using. But yeah, you can see in the bottom right there, we are getting dangerously low to running out of ammo. I just killed myself. That's minus one point for the Bearcat. Yeah, so that death was on purpose, guys, because now, look, I got my ammo back, so... Think smarter, not harder, you know? Now you will see that the Bearcat, without Bloodbath, has a little bit more trouble killing. That's honestly not even that bad. But it makes the ammo consumption problem significantly worse than it already is. Okay, let's go ahead and Wonderlust this room. While Bloodbath's still up, hopefully I'll get a kill. Maybe not. So we'll get a Carnage kill and then swap to the Wanderlust. Now keep in mind, I'm using Slag Betties. But if you wanted instead to proc Bloodbath, because I always use the uh, Carnage to proc Bloodbath. But if you wanted instead, you could be using a Fastball, which would proc it 100% of the time as well. And probably easier, honestly, than the Carnage does. I do think for Hurley, I'm going to put on a Gross Butcher, just because we might not end up getting Bloodbath on him. Alright, so as per usual, use the Carnage to get Bloodbath, then use Bloodbath to rip apart that guy. Guys, they need to nerf Hurley this patch because he is too broken. Slow and steady wins the race, I guess. Brother, I just died to Hurley. Oh, holy cow, we killed Hurley, guys. Anyway, I think that pretty much wraps up this video. Hopefully, I was able to uh, convey a little bit of a point there of just how good Krieg is able to make the supposed worst weapons in the game. And again, I'm not claiming that they're great options. I'm not claiming that they're the best options, but I am claiming that they're extremely viable and extremely usable options. And the main reason I wanted to make this video is because it was genuinely surprising to me just how powerful it is. You guys saw, I was able to go through Southpaw Demon Power twice in like, whatever it was, like 10 minutes or something, 12 minutes or something, and it just ripped and shredded through them. Obviously, this is not a bossing build or anything. Here's the actual full build. To reiterate, the biggest synergies come from the fact that you get bonus mag size, bonus fire rate from Embrace the Pain and Elemental Elation, also mag size from that as well. The Elemental Empathy, which will heal you from most of those weapons, strip the flesh for the carnage, and obviously Bloodbath, both the actual 500% bonus damage on Bloodbath, which will make things like the Becca even more powerful, but also the fact that weapons, these weapons are able to proc Bloodbath more consistently than most weapons can. You'll be procking Bloodbath much more consistently with the Wanderlust than you're even going to do with a Deepa. You'll have Bloodbath up literally the full time you're playing. And this build could be made even better as well. I'm sure there's plenty you could do. Oh, also Salt the Wound, giving bonuses to the Butcher and to the Carnage. All around, I just, I feel like pearls are a little underrated, and I feel like Krieg is the absolute goat and is able to make these kind of crappy weapons not so crappy and make the not crappy weapons like the Stalker, the Becca, and the Butcher to be insanely powerful and really, really good. So that's all for this video, guys. Please leave a like if you enjoyed. Please subscribe if you want to subscribe. And please leave a comment telling me what kind of underrated gear you like to use and Hey, if you also play Krieg, what kind of stuff do you use on Krieg?
And finally, I would like to just give a huge shout out to all of my channel members because you guys are absolutely amazing and help get this whole operation going. So shout out to Caesar, Sean, Crow's Dog, Lil Gas Mask 666, Raji Flaps, Shrubbery, Coda's Garden, and Lobster. I appreciate you guys so much. You are the absolute greatest of all time, of all time. The literal goat's oats, bro. Thank you so much. Love you all. I appreciate you watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this.